All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, everyone good? And everyone can see? Yeah, okay. Hi. Everyone can hear me in the back? Good. Okay, raise your hand if you haven't done project one yet. Anyone has not finished it? Okay, so if you guys haven't finished it, uh, we'd like it to be done tomorrow. So if you could come in after this meeting or any time tomorrow to work on it, that'd be great, okay? Lab is open pretty much all the time, so no excuses. If you, uh, if you want one of us to be there, just message me and yeah. I probably can make it. So, um, yeah. Any, any other questions about project one? It's all good? Okay, it's all good. Okay, so this is our lecture for uh, project two. It's going to be a little uh, LED blinker. So. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Does, does everyone know who that, who that is? <laughs> it's Cardboard Sensei. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Apparently, you don't want to leave your laptop unattended because uh, slides get added to your lecture slides. Uh, but um, Sensei, no. you can follow Sensei on uh, Facebook, Sites with Sensei, and they take him places. It's pretty funny. Okay. Okay. So right. uh, we want feedback from Project One. What do you guys think of it? Uh, raise your hands if you thought it was too fast. Too fast. Okay. okay. What about like a good speed? Okay, what about too easy? Cool. Okay. So pretty good. But you guys like the style of doing it in a workshop where we kind of do it all together? Good? Yeah. Good? Okay. Well, sorry, this one is going to be a little bit more independent, so you can kind of try the two and we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as difficulty is concerned, was it pretty good? Uh, too hard? Good? Good. Mostly good? Okay. okay. All right, that's good. Cool. All right, so. So our project two is it's very similar to project one. It requires the same components except for an LED this time. And um, pretty much what we want to teach you guys is instead of just using a breadboard, we're going to teach you how to use soldering irons and how to solder. So that's the main focus of this project. Okay. So you can see in this picture, that is what your breadboarded um, <coughs> prototype should look like. Um, and the circuit is very, very similar to that one that we did last project for project one. So if you had no problem with that, you should have no problem with this one either. Um, the goal is not to make it difficult on the like technical, the layout stuff. It's really <coughs> to uh, teach you how to solder. So that's why we're not really worrying about the complexity of the actual circuit as opposed to um, actually doing the soldering. So a uh, quick overview of the schematic. You might see this on your, on your uh, spec that you printed out or looked at or something. And again, so you'll see that we're using the 555 timer as the heart of this circuit again. And the layout is going to be very similar because uh, it's doing a similar function, except this time we're blinking the LED light. So we have a demo of it up here. So this is basically project one, but with an LED blinker instead. So this is what you're going to be doing. And we're going to solder it together into something that's permanent for you guys to um, do whatever you want with a permanently soldered <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, so if you notice that these two resistors were your photoresistors in project one. Right. So yeah. Except now they're regular resistors. Okay. Yeah. And um, there's also question marks next to the resistors because um, you can actually vary C2 to vary the, um, the speed that it blinks at. And for um, R3, another <coughs> important thing we're going to teach you guys is how to uh, find resistor values for LEDs. Right. Because if you um, never want to plug an LED straight into a uh, voltage source, because they will just pop and you'll fry them. So uh, really important for red and yellow LEDs. The green and blue ones are pretty voltage tolerant. But the red ones will just burn up right away. Okay. So this is a very high level overview of what we're going to be doing this project. So on the first column, like I said, prototype. You're going to put your entire circuit together on the breadboard and make sure it works on your breadboard first. Because um, we want to work out the kinks before you solder it all together, which makes it a lot harder to undo if you have a mistake later on. And lastly, after you've gotten your breadboard done, then you're going to do your final build, which you're going to use the soldering irons and the perf boards included in your kit. And you're going to make 
your uh, circuit permanent. So two halves, you gotta, you gotta do part one before part two because it doesn't make sense to go <laughs> the other way. Uh, any, any questions about that? Unless you're feeling lucky. <laughs> But I don't Even if you're feeling lucky, don't do don't that. Don't suggest that, yeah. <laughs> Any questions about that? No? We're good? Okay. Next one. Okay. Oh. Where are the... Um, right. Oh, yeah. So, soldering is permanent. It's not really, but let's consider it as permanent because it's kind of hard to undo. Um, in soldering, you take a soldering iron and melt metal at 600 to 700 degrees and fuse stuff together. So, you don't want to have to undo that because it's kind of annoying. So again, test twice and then solder it once. So make sure your breadboard works perfectly <coughs> before you transfer that onto your perf board. And since soldering is kind of hard to undo, uh, make sure that you do not solder any valuable components onto your perf board permanently where you won't be able to take it off. That's in case you make a mistake. Um, you don't want to have your thing stuck on there that you can't replace. And you also are going to be using the 555 timer again later, so you can't stick it on here. Yeah, so what we have is we have these little things that are, um, you put them inside your uh, perf board, and uh, these you just solder right in. And the idea of these is that they're not really, um, it's just metal to connect to your 555 timer. So you can still pull out your 555 timer yeah. once you're done. So if you look at it, it's kind of like a mini breadboard with only <coughs> eight pins in it. These are called 8-pin dip sockets, and they will fit perfectly for the 555 timer or anything else that comes in this, this package. Okay. So uh, we have a couple of GIFs to uh, show you how to solder. So uh, the first thing is um, you, you don't want to be holding whatever you're soldering on because obviously it's one <coughs> less hand you can use to solder. And it's also kind of dangerous to just hold what you're soldering on. So uh, we have these things in the lab called clamps. And you uh, just twist the top to the right to tighten it. And you twist that way to loosen it. And this is just a way to uh, hold what you're soldering on. So these are the um, soldering irons. You push it down to turn it on. And you turn it up probably to about, uh, I usually turn it turn to about 60. But uh, yeah. you can turn it hotter or colder depending on uh, if the solder is melting too yeah. fast for you or too slow, you can turn up or down. Usually 600 to 700 is like a sweet spot. So start there first because you don't want it to be too runny because then it'll like fly out and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it bubbles too much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then each of your soldering stations had this little cleaning sponge pad underneath. so. They're usually dried up because when you put a hot thing on the water, it all evaporates. So we have little water bottles. You just take it and squirt it on there so that it's uh, wet. And then you can use that to clean your tip off while you're <coughs> soldering. So yeah. this is a solder. You just clip a little piece of it that you're going to use. And uh, that way you're not connected to the soldering spool. Yeah. So to solder, you stick the wire in, bend it over. And you, the important part here is you heat the pad first. There's little copper pads on the bottom. And you heat that first, and then you touch the solder to the pad. And what should happen is it should make a perfect circle on the pad. And the idea is you don't want to touch the solder first because um, you have this thing called a cold weld, or cold solder, which is where it doesn't actually, it, it forms solder around the wire, but it doesn't actually solder to the, the, the perf board. So you don't actually have a good connection. And uh, that can be really troublesome when you're trying to debug why your, why your circuit doesn't work. Because it, it could actually be your solder trail that doesn't work. So um, if you heat the copper pad first, and then you put the solder on, that makes sure that it uh, adheres to the copper pads. This is how you clean the soldering irons. So you, there we have a thing of steel wool. So you stick in that to get excess solder off of it. Then you can wipe it on the uh, sponge. Okay. So if you make a mistake, we have these things called solder suckers, and the idea is that they have a. Um, it's kind of. It looks like a little. How do you describe it? It's like a. Yeah, yeah it's like a syringe. Yeah. So um, you push it down, and then there's a little button on the side. So what we want to do is you want to melt your solder, and then you press the button, and it sucks it up. 
So uh, that's one way to remove, if you make a mistake while you're soldering, that's a one way to remove the extra <coughs> solder. Another way is there's these things called soldering wicks. And what these are pretty much do is they're just copper wire with stuff in them. And they just soak up the excess solder. So usually what I do is I try to solder suck it first. And if that doesn't work, then you use the wick. <laughs> or vice versa, depending on how uh, accurate you need the, your solder trails to be. Yeah. So. Uh, that's awkward. Where's the chicken <laughs> thing? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I, make, I, I, I forgot to do that. Okay, uh, we'll we'll do that in a sec. Uh, so, has anyone soldered before? Okay, so oh, wow. a lot of you. So this shouldn't be that difficult. But if you haven't soldered before, or you haven't soldered in a long time, or you're kind of unsure about it, always ask someone. So either Colin or I, or any of the other officers, or someone else that looks like a pro when they're soldering, ask them what what you should do before you try it because. If, if you do something wrong, you could damage your components. Um, you could damage your perf board. You could damage your hands. There's a lot of things that, that uh, like safety-wise. And yeah. What kind of upcoming events do you have? Upcoming events. Oh, oops. Uh, upcoming events. We have a social on. <coughs> actually, who came to the Halloween social? All right, some people, great if you came to the Halloween social. We're going to have another social pretty soon, uh, two weeks from then. Uh, it's going to be a movie night. So if any of you guys like watching movies. Uh, what kind of movie? We don't know yet. So they'll probably send out a poll through the IEEE newsletter and then like ask what movie do you want to watch. <laughs> 